Hello students, uh, we also have certain manufacturing process, uh, very interesting, uh, especially for the plastics, the, the common items, the day to day items that we see out of made up of plastic has got different, uh, very interesting way of producing this. Let us see some of them. The first one is extrusion, which we have discussed in the other class, uh, the, the products can be extruded. The second one is nothing but called blow molding. Okay. So, what happens in blow molding is explained here. We have the shape uh, in which we want the product, we have a facility to blow in, we have the material here in thin layer. Now, we when we blow it, the material will get into the shape because there is air pushing it to the sides, we have the confining. Uh, dice or the shape or the boundaries there. So, it will stick to that and what we get is at the end is nothing but like this. This is called blow molding and you will be uh, surprised to see all our plastic bottles, our water can, everything is actually made uh, by this blow molding. Okay? So, it has got uh, not only those uh, uh, applications, it is a lot of toys hollow toys and all which we see some of the automobile parts all these things actually as they are made by blow molding. The next process which is uh, uh, very commonly used in plastic products is nothing but the injection molding. Okay? Injection molding is uh, very similar to the extrusion, but it has got uh, uh, differences for example, we have a hopper system where whatever material input material you want to put in, it will be there. Then we have a conveyor system which will be pushing it to the, the mold, the cavity into the cavity of which is made by the, by the pattern or, the, uh, or the, uh, the die. And once it is pushed in, what we, when we open it up, what you get is nothing but the product. So, that is what uh, injection molding is all about. Uh, we have a uh, lot of products, electronic uh, implements, uh, we have automobile components, food storage, cans, all these things have uh, uh, gotten by blow molding. Another uh, very common process is thermoforming. Thermoforming can be done by two methods mechanically and giving pressure. Okay? Mechanically what we do is we have a pattern, we have the material here, we push it into the die, it will have this shape and we have the product. The second one is instead of giving a mechanical force, what we give, we give high pressure air. So, high pressure air will be pushing this into the shape in which we want the product and once it is done, we have the product ready. So, these, these common uh, containers, food containers that we see are all uh, made by blow molding. It's a, this is a front uh, bumper of a car which is being from molded. There are a lot of other uh, accessories, things and all which is uh, formed by thermoforming. Now, uh, one common thing which has, uh, because I was telling you about uh, the casting process where we want to melt it and this process is a process in which we do not really get into melting of the material, but what we produce is we produce powder, metal powder and this metal powder will be converted into the product that we want. And if we do that, that is very, the, the, the process is called powder metallurgy. Okay? So, uh, we can see how they do it. We have the powder, then we have, this has got an, an another advantage, we can make products uh, which are made of alloys. It is very difficult to do it in casting and other things, but it can be easily done in alloys. So, what we need is if there are three particular materials used in that alloy, so we have the powder of the three, we mix it and after mixing what we do is we push it into the, into the mold and it is pressed. It is pressed, sometimes pressed and heated. So, if it is pressed and heated, we call it as sintering 
and once it is then it is taken out this is the product this is taken out then there is some treatment uh, uh, what you call the surface finishing treatments which has been done so there is a preheating zone where oxygen uh, oxides if it is formed it has been taken out then cooling form and once you get what you get finally is the final product all right so this is we don't go remember we don't go into the melting point temperature of the materials but we go to some plastic region just before the melting point so that there will be uh, inter uh, powder contact or what you call uh, a type of a cohesion force which is allowing them to be together all right so there are uh, different process i said powder production then characterization and testing blending of it then compaction then we heat it then there are finishing operation and once the rent is done what you get is the final powder metallurgy product so it has got the advantage if you don't get into because when we get something heated and melted it uh, generally loses a lot of its properties so that is not happening here and when we go into the melting point temperature it is a highly energy intensive process lot of energy has to be put into that now if it is not going to the temperature it is saves lot of energy and that way it is more economical as well okay and i also said it can be we can use you uh, know alloy uh, alloys to make these products and certain products which can't be made by other methods can be actually easily produced by powder metallurgy and these are some mo motorcycle parts uh, which are made by powder metallurgy you will be amazed see many of these components are made by powder metallurgy because of the ease in which this can be made these are some uh, vehicle engine parts uh, which is again produced by very similar to casting but we don't go into the melting point temperature some industrial machine parts 